What is up guys, back at you once again, it is your boy Chin, that freaking Mark, here today to kick off something a little bit different for the channel. Uh, a show that I haven't really came up with a name for yet, if I'm being honest with you. But you know what, rather than doing In A Nut Show with Raw and Smackdown, we're just gonna look at them both, head on, and see just who did it better, basically. I'm not taking this idea from anywhere zany at all. So, basically how things are going to work here is we are going to break down both Raw and SmackDown from the opening bell to the sell to the go home. And we'll be explaining what that means a little more in depth here in a matter of time. But in the meantime, let's get this bitch kicked off with our opening bell. So in total for what I'm going to be considering the opening bell of Raw here is going to be our segment with Baron Corbin. Lashley and McIntyre in ring just opening things up being total heels because that is what they are now They're just going over how they beat down Strowman last week and how he's gonna need surgery now Y'all are dicks for that by the way They just kind of go on show that recap video and then Elias comes out with Probably honestly the best thing on the entire Raw show the funniest song he's had so far ever so catchy Bobby Lashley sucks Loved it. Um, Bobby Lashley didn't really like it though because it led into a match between the two. And it was just kind of another classic. Things aren't going the way that Baron Corbin wanted them to go. So halfway through the match, Corbin's going to come in and just change the stipulation. Made it a no disqualifications match. And since we had ourselves a no disqualification match all of a sudden, that just turned into an Elias beatdown party, basically. The worst part of that thing being like a face down Alabama slam that Elias gets on the stairs. It wasn't too good for Elias. And then Lashley just won the match itself with like a winning pose, like a total asshole. Yeah, way to go guys, that was real great. But hey, you know what else? Would you look at things over here on the smack diddly down side of things? We got Paige reintroducing the most over superstar in all of WWE right now. Obviously I'm talking about Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch comes out and everyone pops because everyone loves Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch is like, yo, no bullshit, let's just get this out of the way, Charlotte, come here, got some talking to do with you. Charlotte comes out, and they're just gonna kinda go back and forth and argue over who's better, real quick. And Paige is just like, mmm, yeah, you know what, you're both pretty awesome, so we're gonna have uh, Becky and Charlotte at TLC in a TLC match. Holy hell, it's gonna be awesome. Mandy Rose comes out with her heel posse of friends there, and they just kinda talk some shit for a second. Naomi comes out with her face posse of friends to retort the shit talking in a more face-ish manner. Paige is all like, since all you women just happen to be out here, I'm gonna announce a battle royale for tonight. And whoever goes winning that thing there is gonna be added to this TLC match. Okay, great start, SmackDown. I like where you're going with this. Next up here we are going to have what we are calling our cell for the night. Kind of our middle section here to just get us on through to the end of the night. But our cell on the raw side of things, got a hefty one here, basically consists of Corbin firing a light guy because he wasn't too happy about Elias coming out, Dean Ambrose getting poked in a promo which is interesting, I guess you don't see that. It wasn't steroids, so I don't want to hear that joke from anyone. Lucha House Party and Revival. Revival coming out, defending about how Lucha rules is bullshit, which is a fair point. JoJo's just like, yeah, this matches Lucha House rules. Don't, doesn't matter what you just said. We have Nia Jax coming out, just letting everyone know that she is the heel, remember? Talking all that shit, Miss Facebreaker. Then Ronda comes out to just be like, hey, I'm Ronda Rousey. Things aren't going her way, so Natalia comes out, and then the Riot Squad jumps in. Rosie ain't gonna have that though, because that's her friend. So she goes and breaks things up, and that's just kind of the rest of that segment there. We have AOP versus Gable and Rude, or as I like to call them, Good. And the main takeaway from this match was that Drake Maverick is pissing on Bobby Rude's robe. Yeah. So we're doing piss jokes again. After that, we have ourselves Ember Moon versus Alicia Fox. And what is a really quick match and the most logical thing I think I've ever seen. Braun Strowman gets hurt, so you replace Ember Moon's mixed match challenge partner with Kurt Hawkins, the guy who never wins. Yeah, that's total WWE logic for you there. The main take home here is Kurt Hawkins freaks the fuck out like he's the one that actually won the match. He 
didn't, and I don't know how Mixed Match Challenge went for them because I don't care for that show. No way Jose vs. Jinder Mahal happened. What is this main event? Seth Rollins opened up the IC Open Challenge once again, and Ziggler answered it with a really awesome match here. Uh, the main take here being that even though it was a really dope match and there was a lot of near falls, Seth Rollins is still going to be our Intercontinental Champion at the end of the day. We then have ourselves an open forum that Alexa Bliss sets up for the WWE to ask things to Sasha and Bailey. Basically some little gingers just like, hey, what would you guys change about the women's division? Bailey's like, I wouldn't change everything because I love it! And Sasha's like, I might change something. And then that just kind of leads into them getting jumped by all of uh, all of the friends of Alexa Bliss because, you know, she set this up. Doesn't matter because friends get the upper hand. Gotta love, gotta love everything going to friends, right? Over here on the SmackDown side of things, we got Cesaro getting punched by the Big Show because he thought it was a good idea to talk some shit to him. Go figure on that one. Followed up by The Bar versus The Usos. The Usos just looking dominant is all hell because, you know, The Bar doesn't have the big show by their side anymore. The Miz and New Day backstage just kind of shucking and jiving. And The Miz just doesn't really like their attitude about this whole thing. He gets really pissed saying he's going to go talk to Shane McMahon, his new best friend, and get a match set up for the night. And then we also find out that apparently Big E loves the Marine movies. All six of them. AJ Styles comes out for a promo, and he's kind of salty about not being the WWE Champion. And to be honest with you, he looks kind of weird without the belt around his waist. I was just getting used to seeing it like that. But he's like, you know what, TLC shit's going down, doesn't even matter, man, it's on. There was not a match between Shinsuke Nakamura and Rusev, because before the bell even rang, Shinsuke Nakamura jumps Rusev, and he's just like, fuck yo shit. Beats on up on him. That wasn't really nice, Shinsuke. That was some pretty heel moves. But at least he wasn't low-blowing anybody, right? Next up, we have the Jeff Hardy. 20 years since he first signed with WWE. We're going to avoid all those years he worked in TNA segment. Speaking of the time that he was in TNA, Samoa Joe comes out to just be like, Hey, bro, can't be popping bottles around you now, can we? Because everyone knows that Jeff Hardy likes to party. Honestly, this is exactly how I expected this segment to go. I knew that there was no way in hell it was just going to be, Yay, happy! It has to be heel, and I'm almost glad that it was. Jeff Hardy, you're still my childhood favorite wrestler. No hard feelings there, but this is how the segment needed to go. We then have the matchup that The Miz was asking for, that being The Miz and Kofi. The Miz didn't win. Um, basically, The New Day was just distracting The Miz the whole time. And The Miz wasn't too happy about that because this is The Miz and he throws tantrums. Orton's cutting a promo next up in the ring, just talking some shit. I wasn't really listening. Ray comes out with a neck brace on, thinking that things are going to go his way. And in all honesty, he does put up a pretty good bit of a fight there for a minute until he doesn't put up a good bit of a fight there for any minutes at all. He gets a chair to the throat, but thankfully his mask stayed on his face this time, right? And then we just have Miz showing us that he is hell-bent on being best friends with Shane O'Mac backstage. He's like, you know what? I'm two-thirds best in the world. You're a third best in the world. That means we're like in a relationship. That World Cup that is behind us there, that's our love child. So you better start taking this shit a little bit more seriously. He gets really mad. In our cell here, we are going to be awarding an MVP for both shows, that being most valuable participant and or s depending on what we're looking at here. And on the raw side of things, the MVP is going to get awarded to the IC Open Challenge match between Seth Rollins and Dolph Ziggler because this here is a wrestling show. And that was a pretty damn good wrestling match. Had ourselves a good bit of the graps on a graps show. The MVP award over on the SmackDown side of things is going to go to The Miz. This new face Miz thing that is happening, and he just really wants to be friends with Shane McMahon, and he's not going to let it go. Awesome. Great effort. Loved it. And last up in this formatting of the graps is going to be our go home for the night. First up on Raw, it is a match between Balor and Corbin. Again, shit isn't going the way that Corbin wants it to go. So he gets on the mic and he's just like, Hey, I'm a fucking pussy. I need people to help me out. McIntyre, come out here. Two on one. McIntyre comes out. 
Claymore kicks the fuck out of Balor to win the match. Lashley comes out and he's just like, well, I'm a part of this heel faction. Might as well come out to join in on the ass whooping. And he does exactly that. And that's just how Raw ends. It was a load of shit. As rare, we go over to this breath of fresh air over on SmackDown. We have the Women's Battle Royale. It was awesome. Charlotte and Becky are at ringside just looking super salty watching on here. The match, again, is dope. Just kind of goes on as you would imagine. Asuka being Asuka in this match. She eliminates both of the Iconics at once and Carmella not too long after that. Just looking completely dominant. Speaking of Asuka, not too long after that, the match becomes just down to the final two and it is Asuka and Sonya Deville in a moment that I am glad wasn't being taped for a reactions video because I was freaking out, let me tell you what. Sonya Deville and Asuka on the outside of the apron there, both gone over the top rope. Just kind of fight it out for a minute there, but not to worry, all is well in the universe. Asuka wins, Asuka gets added to the women's TLC match. Holy fucking shit, I cannot wait. I am going to be taking this day off of work, and if I don't get it off, I'm probably just gonna call in. Sorry guys, I don't really give a shit. I am not missing this match. It is going to be dope. With that being said, SmackDown is your winner for the night. Obviously SmackDown was the better show. Everyone was pissed at Raw like the freaking stepchild you are, Raw. God damn it, shut the hell up. SmackDown, you win. You were awesome. Continue to be awesome like that. That would be very much so appreciated. And, hey guys, that is it for this first tier edition of whatever this show is going to be ended up getting called. It has been your boy, Chin, that freaking Mark, breaking it down, getting those graps in. What up? I'll holler at you next week, alright? Peace!